Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here and welcome back to the railway. Today I'm going to try to create the tiniest model I have ever attempted. <laughs> A couple of years ago, while on holiday, I took some photos of this rather nice luggage cart on the Dartmouth Steam Railway, with a view to maybe creating a model of it. But I had a problem back then, this was about two years ago, and back then I only had an FDM 3D printer. And as much as I love those things, they're just not good enough to create really tiny models with loads of detail on them. However, recently things have changed somewhat. I now have a resin 3D printer, which is of course far more capable of creating these very tiny intricate models. So I've got the photos and I've got a machine capable of producing this model, but how do I design this model to the right scale? Obviously the photos don't tell me the dimensions of this model. I was on holiday at the time, so I didn't have a tape measure on me, and I lived too far away to go back with a tape measure. And let's be honest, we train enthusiasts, we can look a bit strange at the best of times, and I think if I cracked out a tape measure at a heritage railway and went around measuring things, then it might frighten people. So for me at least, who's not that confident out in public, that's not an option. So what did I do? Well, I used my iPhone, because the iPhone has a measure app on it, which acts just like a tape measure. You can literally use the camera to measure things. But that's all fine and dandy, and it works very well, but how accurate is it? Obviously, accuracy matters in models, and if this thing is completely inaccurate, then it's useless. So I need to find out first whether this is actually going to do the job. So I need to find something in this room. I'm going to measure it with this, and then I'm going to measure it with a traditional tape measure to see what the difference is. So I'm going to find something. So the front edge of this desk looks to be roughly similar to the model I'm making, so let's measure it with the phone and with the tape measure to see what the margin for error is. Let's start with the phone then, I'll go for this far corner, and let's measure the entire length of this desk. So my phone is saying that that length is 1.24 meters. So let's measure it again, this time with the tape measure, and see if there's a difference. In a way, I'm kind of hoping this is more accurate because I do prefer the old way of doing things when it comes to measuring. Right, ready? Okay, so this is saying 124.5 centimeters. So we've got an extra five millimeters of precision there, but otherwise pretty close. So the iPhone measure app gives values in meters to two decimal places, which means it give you value to the nearest centimeter. And so on this occasion, my phone came out with a value that was five millimeters too short. Now in double O scale, that five millimeters looks like this, 0 0.07 millimeters. That's the gap there between those two prongs. Now, if you're a very, very stringent modeler, that 0 0.07 millimeters might bug you, but it doesn't bug me. I would say that that is close enough. And that's what I did at the Dartmouth Steam Railway. I took a couple of photos that gave me a good idea of the key dimensions of this cart. So that's the length of it, the width of it, and also the wheel diameter. And based on my testing, I can say that those values are reasonably accurate to within around a tenth of a millimetre or so, which is definitely good enough for me. And so I designed this cart. It is made up of five different parts, and I will briefly walk you through them. The first part is this, the chassis, and this holds everything together. There are four wheels that are to be glued onto the chassis, and these wheels are incredibly detailed, to a point that it would have been impossible to make these on an FDM machine. This handle for pulling the cart along is a separate part as well, because it's going to be very, very fine on the 3D printer, and I can also paint it separately as well. There's also this, a detailed bed, which has the full planking effect on it, and some holes in the bottom so that it fits onto the chassis. I also designed a nice suitcase to put onto this model as well. It's not that detailed because this thing is going to be really, really tiny, but it's got all of the basic parts such as the handle, the buckles, and the hinges on the other side. By using a resin 3D printer, fingers crossed I will be able to create all of these parts in immaculate detail. 
and none of us have actually seen this thing created yet, but the length of the thing is absolutely tiny. It's going to be less than 20 millimeters long, which is two centimeters. Let me show you that. So there you go, that's 20 millimeters. The whole thing within these two prongs. So I think it's going to be amazing how tiny this is, but that's if it works. Let's get that printer fired up and let's see. Okay, that is job done. It took just over an hour and a half and there does seem to be something here on the build plate, which is a good sign. Otherwise I would be annoyed and I'd have to do it all again. So now I'm gonna take the build plate off of the printer and turn it onto its side so that I can drain off all of the excess resin. And then I'll be able to take these parts off and see how they turned out. Now this is the most satisfying part. Get that excess resin off just so that it's a bit less messy when I come to clean off the build plate. Right, I'm going to try and do this so that you can see, but I apologise if you cannot at any point. So, I've got this first part, I'll explain what this is later on. And then the rest of it is all kind of merged together on one base, just to make it a little bit easier to print and stick. Okay, so there's everything. Yeah, all the parts that I wanted to print are accounted for. So I'm going to take all of this stuff carefully off its supports, wash it and cure it. And then we'll take a closer look at all of these components and we'll see if they all fit together. Wow, I love resin 3D printing. It's worked. Everything I think is going to be fine with this. We've got a really nice collection of parts here. So let me show you some of them. Here is the main bed of the trolley and all of its little planking is nice and clear to see. That looks really, really good. Yeah, very, very happy with that. So that I think should be perfectly okay. I've got the chassis here, which has got the little holes in it to hold the wheels. Also another hole for the handle and some holes on the top for the bed to be glued on. That looks awesome. We've got the handle, let me show you that. This is a very, very fine piece, quite difficult not to break this one, but I did manage to get it off without warping it or damaging it. Yeah, really nice detail on them. Obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but certainly my favorite parts, the wheels. Look at these things. These are absolutely ridiculous. And yet they are fully detailed right down to the tiny little holes and the nuts holding the axles. It's just incredible. Imagine an FDM machine doing this. Well, you can't, it's impossible. Ha, huh, unbelievable. And then we've got the little cases. Even these have worked out beautifully. You can see the little join where the case shuts. You can see the buckles on the top, the handle. Yeah, a little bit of paint on that. That should be absolutely perfect. What remains then is this mystery piece, which I haven't talked about yet. And this is a little mask that's going to help me paint the planking on the inside of the bed. So the idea is that you see those little planks on the bed, this fits on top like that. Or does it? Yes, it does. And then I can airbrush through those holes and paint the planks black. So speaking of painting, I now want to paint all of this stuff. The bed is going to be brown. The chassis and the wheels are going to be black. The handle is going to be brown. So since the chassis and the wheels are going to be black, I'm going to glue the wheels to the chassis now and then paint it all in one go because then I won't have to worry about trying to hold the wheels in position. So a little bit of glue. Let's see if the wheels will fit. Yes, the wheels fit. So we now have a chassis with the wheels setting in it. And then, like I say, I can paint that whole thing black. So while this dries, let me set up the airbrush and let's paint the bed brown. I'm starting by painting the bottom of this bed, just in case you do see it from beneath at any point. Not expecting to, but I'd rather cover the whole thing. Now that that's done, I can turn it over and paint the top of the bed. This is more important because this is the part you'll see. While the bed dries, I'm now moving on to the chassis with the wheels glued onto it. And this, of course, is just going to be painted plain black, which is nice and simple. I'm doing the same thing, starting with it one way up, getting good coverage on it, and then flipping it over and doing the same on the other side so that it's all fully painted. 
I also remembered that I was going to paint the handle brown as well, so back with the brown paint and I'm painting that piece brown. While this stuff dries, I'm moving on to the cases. I don't want both of my cases to be the same color, so I'm painting one of them in a sort of dark green, as you can see, full paintwork on there. And then the other one, I've gone for a sort of lighter, creamier color, roughly the color of a suitcase, I suppose. Now, since I had this lighter, creamier paint loaded into the airbrush, I decided I would just take a second to paint the little handle parts of the trolley handle just to give that a little bit more detail and that led to eventually me deciding I would paint the suitcase handles as well with a little bit of black and I think that looks really good. The final thing to do is to apply the mask to the bed and then spray the black paint through the gaps and I'll show you how that looks in just a second. Now then, everything is painted to my satisfaction and it's had a minute or two to dry which means it's finally time for assembly. So. This kit has never been assembled before, but I think it should be straightforward enough. First, I'm going to attach the handle of the trolley onto the chassis of the trolley. And uh, all I've got to do here is make sure it goes on the right way, because if the trolley is facing downwards, I've created an impossible trolley. All right. Ooh, even that looks good. And now I've got to just figure out whether or not the actual bed of the trolley is going to fit onto the chassis. Oh, yeah, and it does quite easily. Great, so let's glue that in position. Plenty of glue on this, because these are the two main pieces of the model. There we go, that's that on then. And now I've just got to decide on the positioning of the cases. I've painted them so that this one can be stood up, and so that this one is gonna be laid down like this. And um, I think that formation looks pretty good, something like that. And so I'm gonna glue those in place like that, I think. And I think that should be job done. So I'm going to allow the glue a moment to dry, and then I will show you the finished product. So here is the photo of the original trolley at full scale that I've made my model of. And here is the painted model of the trolley. And this is a, a coin, a pound coin for scale. So yeah, it's pretty darn tiny. So let me show you some of the features. Obviously this has the painted suitcases on board, which I think look really good. It's got the separately fitted handle with the actual grab section picked out. And then you've got the tiny little intricate wheels with all of that detail on them, as well as the detailed chassis as well. Of course, the planking is also painted on the inside. And you know, for such a tiny model that is smaller than a coin, there are actually nine separate parts making up this thing. So. I'm really happy with it. Let's take a look and see what it looks like on a station platform. So there you have it. Seems to scale in quite nicely with the other objects on my, frankly, very poor by comparison station platform. And here comes a loco now to give you a better sense of that. Ah, we've kind of uh, lost the trolley there. But there you have it. That's how tiny this thing is compared with everything else. And you know what? I still thoroughly enjoyed this. It's not a loco, it's not a wagon. It's not a coach, but it's still a real life object shrunk down into miniature. And for me, that's what I love. I love the challenge of how can I make this work at one to 76.2 scale. And luckily this one has worked. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project. Please do comment down below and let me know what you think. And is there anything else you'd like to see me make? For now though, thank you so much for watching and I will see you very, very soon for another video. All right, cheers everybody, you take care.